this is the story of the biggest motor grader ever built. In 1980, Italian entrepreneur Umberto Acco was commissioned by the Libyan government to build a custom crawler dozer and a gigantic motor grader so both machines could be used for a massive earth-moving project in Colonel Gaddafi's country. The super grader was equipped with a 700 horsepower engine at the front and a 1,000 horsepower rear end power plant. The machine had an operating weight of 400,000 pounds or 182 metric tons, making it the largest motor grader ever built. Running on 12 tires and carrying a 33-foot blade, the Akko Super Grader soon faced major political challenges as the United States imposed a trade embargo on Libya in 1986, and as a result, the Akko machines were never shipped to intended destination. While the Superdozer was reportedly saved and stored in a private location, the Akko Motor Grader was eventually dismantled and sold for scrap after becoming a tourist attraction. Years later, in 2006, the Akko company disappeared after Umberto's death. Imagine standing by a 5.5 million pound electric shovel without having anyone to tell you you can't be there because of questionable safety reasons like today. That's how free people were in 1955 when the Marion 5760 was built in Ohio and no one died from watching it. Nicknamed the Mountaineer, the 5760 sat on four sets of crawlers and each of the eight track sections was 23 feet long and seven feet high while the overall height of the shovel was 147 feet to the top of the boom. Possibly one of the most famous super strippers of all time, the Mountaineer entered service in January 1956 and was owned by the Hanna Coal Company, a division of the console group of coal companies. As modern as you could get back in the day, the Marion 5760 and its 65 cubic yard bucket came equipped with dual cabs, allowing the operator to have a clear view no matter the direction in which the shovel was digging, as well as a centrally located elevator. By far the world's largest land machine ever produced by the mid-1950s, the giant 5760 worked for 23 years until being parked for good in January of 1979. It sat for nine years, getting trashed by vandals and elements before being scrapped in 1988. Now just imagine how it felt to stand by this marvelous piece of iron back in the day, a feeling you and I will never experience. Why did this high-speed dozer fail on the market in your opinion? In 2009, John Deere released a unique machine designed to compete with well-proven motor graders. But how? By improving speed and maneuverability, according to JD. And so was born the clever, but yet controversial, 764. Labeled by the American giant as a high-speed dozer, the articulated 764 was manufactured to basically do what motor graders can do with better operator's comfort, better flotation, and a faster dozing experience, all while reducing risks of damaging pavement. Described twice as fast as a regular crawler dozer, the John Deere 764 had an operating weight close to 16 metric tons and was powered by a 210 horsepower JD engine. It was able to grade with extreme precision at speeds up to six miles per hour. A few years only after its market introduction, the 764 high-speed dozer was discontinued despite great field reviews. No upgrade was ever offered by John Deere and the concept fell through ever since. It's official, the Komatsu PC9000 is coming and this is what we know. A few weeks ago, Mining Shorts was the first channel to report the upcoming construction of a brand new supersized mining excavator, the Komatsu PC9000. This is now confirmed by Suncor and it's about to be big, real big. As reported by International Mining a few days ago, Suncor recently stated via Jason Wyman, the general manager for the mine and tailings team at Fort Hills, Canada, that the Komatsu PC9000 will be arriving towards the end of the year. Always investing to reduce the gigantic mine's operating cost, Suncor already describes the upcoming PC9000 as the largest hydraulic shovel in the world, but Komatsu wouldn't comment on that, so please take this information with a grain of salt. Suncor's investment includes the purchase of 55 new trucks for the region, with 23 allocated to the Fort Hill site. So what specs will that PC9000 be coming with in your opinion? Will it be bigger than a 6090? Let's speculate now. Introducing the largest track loader in the world, the Cat 973. A couple weeks ago, Caterpillar unveiled the brand new version of the 973 as it replaces the 973K. Known as the largest track loader in the industry, the 973 could be a gigantic market hit for the American manufacturer. Rated at 275 horsepower through a Cat C9.3B engine, 
the brand new 973 has an operating weight of 64,900 pounds or 29.8 metric tons, and it can be equipped with a 4.2 cubic yard bucket. As modern as it gets, the brand new Caterpillar 973 features an auto mode that can adapt the engine speed to the load leading to reduced fuel consumption. The loader also features Vision Link, CAT payload, or the optional Fusion Quick Coupler. The 973 first came out in 1982, and the loader's bucket capacity remained unchanged since its introduction. Originally powered by a 3306 engine, the machine is now 10,000 pounds heavier than it was 42 years ago. Welcome to one of the largest operating gold mines in Canada. The Canadian Malartic Mine is a gold mine located in the town of Malartic, in the heart of Quebec's Abitibi Gold Belt. The mineral deposit was discovered in 1923, and it's now one of the country's largest operating open pit gold mines. Running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the gigantic Malartic mine produced in 2023 close to 20 million tons of ore, while gold production reached over 600,000 ounces of gold that year, with more than 1,500 full-time workers. Currently mining the newly cut Barnat pit, forecast to reach 1.7 kilometers in length and no less than 380 meters in depth, the Canadian Malartic Mine will continue to operate until 2029 with a fleet of more than 100 pieces of mining equipment. On top of its open pit complex, Malartic is also developing Odyssey, an underground mine estimated to reach just about 1.8 kilometers in depth, with a production forecast at right around 550,000 ounces of gold annually. Amazing operation. This is probably the most fascinating mining story you'll ever get to hear. Twin brothers Marion and Milton DeSecker decided to open a coal mine on their own property located in northeastern Ohio in 1947. First started as a strip mine, it later became an underground mine, but this is definitely not the most fascinating part of the story. Self-taught miners, the DeSecker brothers ran the operation all by themselves, from mining the coal to selling it to local customers, all while keeping the mine as hidden as possible, which obviously required one thing, keeping federal mine inspectors off their land. Working daily in what's now known as Ohio's hidden mine, the DeSeckers fought for the right to work on their own property despite constant pressure from the government. But the twins didn't care, and they kept mining coal behind locked gates until 1995. But every cool story has an end. In 1997, Milton DeSecker passed away and Marion followed him 10 years later. The mine was later reclaimed, which required about 210,000 cubic yards of earthwork to eliminate the high wall. Absolute geniuses. Would you take this over a Volvo A60H? Leave your comment. In 2016, Bell unveiled a new off-road truck designed with one idea in mind, providing a unique solution to a market segment that was previously only contested by rigid trucks. And so was born the fancy-looking Bell B60E articulated hauler. With a payload rated at 55 metric tons, the same as Volvo's A60H, the B60E adopted the two-axle concept that you can see on a rigid truck but with a driven front axle and independent front and rear chassis. The back axle of the Bell B60E is a dedicated 70-ton truck and haulage axle from Kessler, Germany, while the hauler is powered by a MTU engine rated at 577 horsepower. The dump truck can reach speeds up to 32 miles per hour. Globally available, the Bell B60E, which offers more off-road capability than any conventional rigid truck out there, has been a major success for the South African manufacturer since 2016. So would you take this or a Volvo A60H? Let me know.